Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget standard or modern decks and this week we're taking a look at a black-white profane control in standard. This is a black-white control deck running Profane Procession from Arrivals of Ixalan, a powerful 3 mana legendary enchantment with an activated ability for 5 mana where you can exile target creature and then if there are 3 or more creatures exiled by Profane Procession you get to transform it into Tomb of the Dusk Rose which lets you replay the creatures you've exiled with the Profane Procession. So a very powerful removal spell and then card advantage engine once you start casting those creatures. To go along with our Profane Procession we have a whole bunch of removal and other card draw effects, so let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with two copies of Fatal Push, a good removal spell to take care of cheaper creatures, especially powerful against vehicles like Heart of Kirin. Next up we also have a one-off Thaumatic Compass, which transforms into Spires of Araska if we have seven or more lands, which is a great way to lock down opposing creatures and force the opponent to overextend, where you can get them with one of your many sweeper effects. We also have four copies of Treasure Map as a card advantage engine, giving us some card selection at first and then transforming into Treasure Cove, letting us sacrifice those treasures to draw additional cards. Also great to set up Ascent for our two copies of Arch of Araska. Then we also have two copies of Baffling End as an additional cheap removal spell, and it's an enchantment that stays in place, another great tool to get up to those 10 permanents for the City's Blessing. Next up we have two copies of Argwell's Bloodfast, which is another one of those cards that transforms into a land, but this one we would rather keep on the front side, since it lets us draw a card for two mana and two life. Then we have four copies of Dusk Legion Zealot, another way to draw a card, so we get a two mana 1-1 one -one that enters a battlefield and loses us one life and draws us a card, so replaces itself and then the body can maybe chum block to essentially gain more life than you've lost and can also pressure our opponents slowly but surely. Then we also have two copies of Moment of Craving, another great removal spell giving a creature minus two minus two until end of turn and gaining us two life. And of course every life we gain with an Argyll's Bloodfast in play, the more cards we get to draw. And that's why we also have two copies of Ritual of Rejuvenation in a deck, a card that seems pretty poor, but uh, for three mana we get to gain four life at instant speed and draw a card, so it replaces itself. And of course with all that life gained, we can draw more cards with our Zealots and our Bloodfast. Then we have our two copies of Profane Procession to complement our other removal spells, and this one is also a card that kind of forces the opponent to overextend with a whole bunch of creatures at once, which is where we can punish the opponent with our sweeper effect. Then we have two copies of Cast Out to deal with any problematic permanent at instant speed, and we can also cycle it for one mana, and two copies of Ixalan's Binding, which is very similar, can't play it at instant speed and can't cycle it, but it does get rid of a particular permanent forever, and the opponent will be unable to cast that same card, and in standard, where lots of people play four offs of every card, that can definitely punish an opponent keeping a hand with multiple of the same card. Then we have three copies of Settle the Wreckage as one of our sweeper effects, exiling all attacking creatures and giving the opponent a basic land in return. But of course if the opponent is cautious to play around Settle the Wreckage and only attacks with one or two creatures, we can just use our spot removal spells instead, so we're not forced to use the Settle if we don't want to. And also works nicely with Profane Procession, kind of forcing the opponent to attack with everyone. And then we also have two copies of Fumigate as an additional sweeper effect, just destroying all creatures, so we don't have to rely on our opponent attacking us. Then we have another card advantage engine in Champion of Dusk, which is a 5 mana 4 4 vampire. When it enters the battlefield, we get to draw X card and lose X life, where X is the number of vampires we control. So if we just play the Champion of Dusk by itself, and if the opponent doesn't remove it in response of the trigger, we just get to draw one card and lose one life, which is fine, since we get a 5 mana 4 4 that draws a card. But if we happen to have a few Dusk Legion Zealots hanging around on the battlefield, we get to draw even more cards. And the thing about Champion of Dusk is that it doesn't always work out all that well if you're actually playing a dedicated vampire deck, since if you have 5 or 6 vampires out, it could be too dangerous to play the Champion of Dusk. But in a control deck like this one, we're happy to just draw one or two cards with it, which is totally fine. 
Then we also have one copy of Tetsimok Primal Death as an additional way to get rid of multiple creatures at once as a 6 mana 6-6 six, six with Death Touch. By revealing Tetsimok from your hand and paying a black mana you can put a Prey Counter on a creature from the opponent and then when Tetsimok enters a battlefield you get to destroy all creatures with Prey Counters on them. So Tetsimok is another one of those cards that forces the opponent into difficult situations where they have to choose whether or not to overextend with all their creatures or to hold back at which point our card advantage takes over. And last but not least, we have one copy of Cruel Reality as an additional win condition, a 7 mana enchantment that enchants the opponent, and at the beginning of their upkeep, they have to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, and if they can't, they lose 5 life, so that's quickly going to kill the opponent, given that we have so many removal spells to get rid of their creatures. Then taking a quick look at our mana base, we have two copies of Arch of Araska as an additional card advantage engine once we have the City's Blessing. Then we have four copies of Concealed Courtyard, which enters the battlefield untapped if it's one of our first three lands. Then we have two copies of Field of Ruin to get rid of opposing transformed lands like Search for Ascanta and the like. We have three copies of Forsaken Sanctuary as a necessary evil to fix our mana since we do want to play those colorless lands as well. And then eight planes and seven swamps. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we have three copies of Duress as a nice discard effect against control decks. We have two copies of Angel of Sanctions as a pretty versatile sideboard card that can come in in a multitude of matchups, especially once the opponent takes out most of their own removal spells. We have some more dedicated discard cards. We have Lost Legacy, mostly to name Approach of the Second Sun, and we have Dispossess, mostly to name God Pharaoh's Gift, which are both problematic cards for the deck otherwise. We have an additional Ixalan's Binding to get rid of problematic permanents, like the aforementioned God Pharaoh's Gift. Then we have additional copies of Moment of Craving and Fatal Push against aggro decks. Then we have one copy of Approach of the Second Sun ourselves as an additional win condition, in case our other win conditions might not get there. And then two copies of Golden Demise as a cheap sweeper effect against Go White decks. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This unfortunately is a mulligan. And this is a keep. Bottom the Swamp. Opponent with Forest Go. We'll play the Courtyard. Treasure map a nice pickup there. It gives us something to do if our opponent isn't presenting threats. Double Forest into Deep Root Elite, so it looks like we're up against a Merfolk deck of sorts. Let's just use Fatal Push right away. Untap. And run out Treasure Map. Probably gonna scry on upkeep next turn. Opponent with a second elite. So upkeep, let's scry with the treasure map. Bottom the swamp, I think. Play the swamp, say go. Don't think we cycle cast out here. Would rather keep it as a removal spell. Third Deep Root Elite, can finally put a counter somewhere. Hoping they don't have a follow-up 1-drop, looks like they don't. So they just get in for 2, puts us to 18. Untap, this time we won't scry since we want to cast one of our 4-drops. I guess Fumigate changes things here, since we can just take a hit and then play Fumigate. Opponent gets in for 3. Guess we'll take it. Alright, change of plans. If our opponent's not doing anything, we can just use cast out end of turn to force the opponent to make a move. Since just using Fumigate for these two creatures doesn't seem worth it. Alright, they have a Blossoming Defense to protect their Deep Root Elite. That's fine, so happy we did this after combat. Otherwise we would have taken an additional 2 points. So let's draw. So do we fumigate now is the question. I guess we do. And save the Ixalan's Binding for a more problematic creature. Potent could also be missing blue mana, since they've only played green cards so far, and Merfolk is typically blue-green. Potent just says go, further indicating they might be stuck on one color. Upkeep this time we will scry. A moment of craving seems fine in this matchup. 
So we'll draw it, play our land, say go. And there we go, the blue mana finally. It's a tap land though, so no blue merfolk this turn yet. And upkeep, we'll scry with treasure map right away. And put that on the bottom. And profane procession is also pretty good here. Um, don't think we want to use Field of Ruin on the Sanctum. Opponent probably has islands in their deck. And now that we have a mana advantage, Profane Procession is going to be great. River Snake, yep. Into Enter the Unknown. Response will use Moment of Craving. See if they have a Blossoming Defense. Looks like they do, but that's fine. They don't get to attack us this turn anyways. And then we have Profane Procession to get rid of a sneak. So I'm definitely liking our position right now. Kumena Speaker revealed. And they decide to keep that on top. Another Profane Procession. Let's draw a card first with Treasure Cove. Yeah, I think we just main phase use the Procession on the sneak. If we had more mana, we could have considered using Field of Ruin also to shuffle the opponent's deck since they kept the card on top that they wanted. And now we can slowly start drawing more cards, exiling more of the opponent's creatures. There's the Kumena Speaker we knew about. And Hadana's Climb, so that explains some of the opponent's card choices. All the Blossoming Defenses now make more sense. Let's draw. Draw a card with Treasure Cove, try and hit a land drop. And then we'll just use the Procession right now. Hadana's Climb is pretty good against Procession since that makes even the smallest creatures into actual threats. But I'm sure we can overcome it given that we have a second Procession in hand. So our opponent's gonna run out of creatures at some point. And we can even use Ixalan's Binding on the Hadana's Climb if we really want to. But at the moment it doesn't seem necessary. Cruel Reality, that's a good one. Let's just play that. And that forces the opponent to play creatures, otherwise they die. But if they play creatures, they also kind of die. So between a rock and a hard place. Let's pass the turn. And they're gonna start taking damage. Down to 15 they go. Opponent just passes. We'll play a treasure map. And say go. Opponent falls to 10. There's unclaimed territory, naming merfolk. And 4 mana. Our opponent just scoops it up. Alright, sideboarding against blue-green merfolk. So this is where we want the two golden demise. Um, also don't mind additional copies of Fatal Push and or Moment of Craving. Although we don't want to overdo it with the spot removal since the opponent might just board into a more controlling deck. I think we can get rid of perhaps an Ixalan's Binding and a Settled Wreckage. Maybe shave a Bloodfast. Ritual of Rejuvenation can probably go. Maybe we don't need all four Fatal Pushes. Might be overdoing it a bit. This seems fine. Could also consider Angel of Sanctions as a versatile card. But I think we're fine here. Got plenty of removal and then at some point we'll find a way to win the game. So this hand is not great, but I think we'll keep. Opponent could have a Naturalize to deal with the first procession, then we have a backup one. And Golden Demise can be very good if our opponent doesn't play any giant merfolk. Fatal Push is a nice pickup. Opponent leads with Islands, so that's also a good sign since they're not leading with turn 1 Kumena Speaker. Turn to River Sneak, that's fine. Don't want to fatal push that right away since Golden Demise still deals with it. Even if they put a plus one plus one counter on it, so let's play the planes, say go. Opponent might have brought in some cards like Spell Pierce or Negate. And Deep Root Elite is fine. They still left up green mana, so that could be Blossoming Defense. We're just gonna play out Profane Procession for the turn, I think. And then hope that Fatal Push and Golden Demise can stabilize the board afterwards. So let's draw. Drew a treasure map for the turn, so that's nice. But I think we just want to deploy one of our Profane Processions here. 
say go. And next turn, hopefully, this Golden Amines is gonna be great. Unclaimed territory, names Merfolk. I guess I could have something like a Seafloor Oracle, draw a bunch of cards. But it looks like that's not the case. Merfolk Branchwalker, yep. So hopefully all their Merfolk will still have two toughness. And yep, looks like they put the counter on the River Sneak. But they are keeping up two mana, never mind, they're just going all in. So this Golden Demise is going to be pretty bank breaking. And if they put the plus one plus one counter on the Deep Root Elite, they get totally owned by the Golden Demise, since now they all die to just Golden Demise, otherwise we would have had to use Fatal Push as well. But we do go down to 10 here, so our opponents got that going for them. Draw, let's play the Swamp, play Golden Demise, and their opponent's not going to be happy. And say go. Opponent on taps. And there's Kumena, alright. So we found a target for Profane Procession. Fatal Push cannot answer it and they might have a Blossoming Defense here as well. Which is a reason why we want to use Profane Procession in our turn. Moment of Craving doesn't really change that. So let's do it right now. That works. Land number five. Opponent says go. So now we get to deploy treasure map. Start drawing extra cards. Deep Root Elite, yep. Into Merfolk Mistbinder. I guess we want to use Moment of Craving a response here. Mistbinder resolves. And then we can use Treasure Map. Bottom the planes. Draw one anyways, but that's fine since we do want to hit more lands. And I think we just use the Procession right away here. Say go. And once the first procession transforms, we still have a second one, so we can pretty aggressively use the procession. And end of turn, let's use treasure map. Bottom another treasure map, I think. Yeah, I think we don't need more treasure maps at this point. Draw moment of craving. Could have scried on upkeep with treasure map, but I'm fine just keeping up all our mana. At this point, both lands and spells are good, so Scry diminishes in value a little bit. Another treasure map, I think we'll bottom. Kind of want to find a way to close out the game. And there we go, Champion of Dusk will do. Just draws us one card, but can start clocking the opponent. End of turn we can draw with Treasure Cove. And River Snake is fine. Let's use Treasure Co first. And then try to gain some life back with Moment of Craving. Attack for four. Play Treasure Map. Say go. Kumena Speaker, yep. I think it's time to uh, transform the Profane Procession. So let's scry one. I guess we'll bottom the compass here. Don't really foresee needing the compass. And then draw with Treasure Cove. Another Golden Mice. Let's just draw. Attack for four. And say go. And end of turn we can start putting some of these merfolk to work. Alright. First time activating our transformed procession. Let's get back Kumena. Scry with treasure map. Bottom that. Draw. Bloodfast is not bad. Guess we'll scry an upkeep now. Uh, I guess we can use a land here, actually. Put in the Merfolk Lord. Draw 
get in for seven. Can even make Kumain unblockable if we want to, but it doesn't seem necessary. Alright, I think I'll just pass. No need playing more enchantments, but it's pretty dead here. And there we go, managed to beat Blue-Green Merfolk with our Black-White control deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got an early baffling hand if we're up against a creature deck, and then two treasure maps for some value. Turn one Evolving Wilds from the opponent. Gets a Swamp. Let's play a Sanctuary, say go. Black White. Into Hidden Stockpile, alright. So we're in for a grind. We want to try and find our cast outs and Ixalan's Binding to get rid of that stockpile since the recursive tokens are going to be an issue otherwise. Evolving Wilds triggers Revolt, so they'll get their first token. And on our upkeep I think we'll start scrying with Treasure Map. Cast out is perfect. And then we can still play a second Treasure Map. Opponent gets in for one, and just says go. think we'll just take our draw step for now, find a Tatsimok, that could be good. And I guess there's no reason to really wait, so we might as well use the cast out now, give the opponent fewer options on what to do with the stockpile. The reason to do it in the opponent's turn is if the opponent has their own cast out, to get rid of our cast out, this is fine. I imagine if our opponent had the 4-man enchantment that doubles all tokens, they would have played it before playing start to finish. And a blood fast from the opponent could also be an issue. So upkeep will scry with the first treasure map. Concealed courtyard can go to the bottom. And I guess we'll scry with the second map as well. And swamp, I guess is okay to keep here since we have a Tatsumok. Probably should have tapped differently to keep up more black mana for Tatsumok. Since, yeah, I think we do just reveal. Opponent activates the Bloodfast. And we'll reveal again. And say go. Shafa Junes can give the opponent some reach. But I imagine that we'll just activate the Bloodfast a couple times. Well, they're committing a Sacred Cat as well. They get in for three points. I don't think we want to play out Tatsumok quite yet. Instead, we'll scry with the first treasure map to transform it. Excellence Binding is good. And I think we'll just draw. And then we can play out the Excellence Binding on the Bloodfast. Opponent's gonna activate it twice. And then we can reveal one more time with Tatsumok. I think we put it on the servo since we might use Baffling End on Sacred Cat instead. Say go. Glacial Fortress, so blue mana as well. Perhaps for Signboard Negates. Regal Caracal, alright. So we're gonna take a pretty big hit here. Could use the treasures to cast a Ritual of Rejuvenation, but I don't think that's worth it here. Let's just take a draw step, find a Plains. So we can kind of decide how many creatures we still want to kill. Definitely want to get rid of the Caracal. And I guess we can get rid of one more cat token here. And then just play Tatsumok. Now that the board's cleaned up a bit, we can start leveraging our card advantage engines. A finish from the graveyard that we knew about. And Anointer Priest, that's fine. Can use our Baffling End on that if we want to. And our opponent embalms Sacred Cat right away to gain a life. Alright, so I don't hate our spot here. Opponent does still have 5 cards in hand, which is the scary part. 
but we should be able to manage. So upkeep, I think we scry with treasure map. Swamp on the bottom. And fumigate is perfect. So do we want to do anything else first? Don't think so. So let's just play fumigate. Gain some life back. And we can still activate Treasure Cove end of turn. And the Scarab God. Alright, so do need to find an answer to that. But we do have a couple. So that's what the blue splash was for. Anointer Priest, yep. So let's draw with Treasure Cove. Profane Procession would be perfect in this spot. Another Fumigate also buys us some time should we fail to find a cleaner answer. Scry, another treasure map is tempting, but we should probably bottom that. Draw a swamp. Let's draw with Treasure Cove first. Concealed Courtyard to draw. Yeah, so we could just Fumigate again. Or we can Ritual of Rejuvenation, try to draw into something. Kind of like just Fumigating here. And then playing a Concealed Courtyard, and then next turn we get three draws between the Treasure Coves and our draw step to find a better answer to the Scarab God. We have two Profane Processions left, a Cast Out and Excellence Binding left, and there's probably a few others. Opponent replays a Scarab God. We'll just untap and draw. Settle Wreckage also works, I guess. Sacrifice a treasure, draw a card. We don't really want to make the opponent untap with the Scarab God, though, since then they can start getting creatures back from the graveyard, like the Regal Caracal. So let's play the Zealots. Draw a card. A moment of Craving is not gonna do it. Alright, so Ritual of Rejuvenation. I guess we can still cast here. And a Thaumatic Compass. Alright, so I think we're just passing here and planning to settle the wreckage. And the opponent will get one Scarab God activation since they only have the one blue source. So they can get back the Caracal from their graveyard, but I think we'll manage. So we just have to hope our opponent attacks with a Scarab God and doesn't leave it at home. Opponent can also decide to get back our Tatsumok or Dusk Legion Zealot, but I think they'll go with the Caracal here. Alright, so they do go for the Zealot, which we can get rid of with Baffling End. Lose some life to the Scarab God. Does our opponent attack or do they see the Saddle? They're gonna get back Anointer Priest, gain some life. And they are attacking, alright, so we get to Saddle them. Get rid of the Scarab God, and hopefully they don't have a second one in hand, which could very well be the case. Field of Ruin. I guess it can get rid of the Glacial Fortress, and maybe they don't have a second island. Yeah, we probably want to do that to thin out the deck before we start drawing with Treasure Coves. Could have also gone for the Shafat Dunes. Opponent only with the one island, good to know about. Let's Baffling Ants, the Dusk Legion Zealot. And then we can still play the Compass and activate it as well. Get another land out of the deck and say go. And then end of turn we can use the two treasure coves one last time. We have both drawn the same amount of cards, so the game is pretty even so far. But that can quickly change if our opponent has a second Scarab God, for example. Which looks like they do, yep. Alright, so let's try and find that Profane Procession of the top. That would be awesome right now. And thanks to our Field of Ruin, our opponent doesn't get to activate the Scarab God right away. Priest can get in for a point. We'll happily take that. And end of turn, use Treasure Cove. A swing and a miss. And can we hit a home run? We cannot. Right, let's draw. Alright, so we're in a bit of trouble here. We do still have the spires to fog the Scarab God, but the Scarab God activations are the scary thing. So let's play a treasure map 
And I suppose we just say go here. Bono now gets back Tatsumok, which is just a 4-4. They probably wanted to get back the Karakal, or they perhaps have one of their token doubling enchantments in hand and want to play that first before getting back the Karakal. And I guess this is also a zombie, so we get actually drained for two by the Scarab God every turn. So Profane Procession would still be an awesome draw and would solve most of our problems. Does our opponent play around Saddle Rackage here? If they just attacked with the Priest, we could have used the Spires. So that makes sense. Opponent embalms Anointer Priest. And end of turn, we want to make sure to use our treasure map. Bottom and upkeep will scry again to try and find that Profane Procession. There it is. All right, we're back in business. Play Profane Procession. And we're going to get rid of the Scarab God right away. And we can even activate it a second time on Tatsumok. Although Tatsumok is a token, so we wouldn't actually get a second creature underneath the procession. Which I guess is a good thing, since then we can repeatedly get rid of the opponent's creatures. Hidden Stockpile, alright. They're gonna sacrifice Renegade Map to enable Revolt. Does the opponent attack? Just with Tatsumok. So let's use the Spires. And in response to the stockpile, we want to use the procession on one of the priests so that the opponent doesn't gain all that life. Opponent sacrifices it to the stockpile response to scry. And they gain one life from the one anointer priest. Alright, so let's scry with treasure map on upkeep. Bottom that, and thanks to our two treasure coves, we can draw cards right away if we want to. Draw step is a moment of craving. Let's draw. Uh, Settler Wreckage is not bad. Let's draw again. And another Settler Wreckage. Alright, let's play a tapped courtyard. Say go. And we can just start going to town on the opponent's tokens here. With our Profane Procession, which, since they are tokens, they will not count towards the three creatures exiled, so we can indefinitely keep exiling tokens with the Procession. Regal Caracal, yep. Guess we could have exiled the priest in response here, but that's fine. Put on sacks to the stockpile. Tatsumok gets in there, and then decides it's better to stay back. And then, in response to the trigger, we'll get rid of the priest. Opponent sacrifices a priest, and then we get rid of a cat token. I guess getting rid of Tatsumok is also fine. Alright, let's draw. And let's sacrifice our last treasure token. Excellence Binding is a nice one. Can get rid of the hidden stockpile, which I guess is a problem at this point since it lets the opponent scribe return. Could have decided to keep it, maybe for a cast out from the opponent, which can get rid of the procession. But we still have another cast out in our deck, should it come to that. So let's pass. And this way our opponent also doesn't get to play additional copies of Stockpile, which they very well may have. Arch of Raska is an issue. Um, did not draw any copies of Field of Ruin, or, well, we activated one, I guess. Still have a second one. Haven't found our own copies of Arch yet. Not a Renegade map. No attacks from the opponent. We'll just get rid of all the tokens here. Don't think we want to exile the Caracal quite yet, since... Don't want to exile too many actual creatures. But at some point we might. And there's Field of Ruin, perfect. Get rid of that arch right away. Get another planes. Say go. Anointed procession. Yep. Opponent can double all their tokens. And another caracal. That's fine. 
and then we can just start exiling the tokens. I guess at some point we can just exile the two caracals and start casting them to actually close out the game. But for now this is fine. Found a fatal push, say go. And there's a cast out, which is presumably gonna exile our profane procession. But then we can just respond by activating it twice. So they're actually going for the Ixalan's binding with hidden stockpile, which makes sense. All right, so their opponent got their stockpile back. I guess we could have responded by using the procession on the opponent's creature so that they don't sack them to scry. But the opponent already had Renegade map for the Revolt trigger. It might be time to start getting rid of the Caracals to actually close out the game. Opponent can sacrifice it in response. So opponent doesn't want us to flip the procession. So I guess we could have responded to the cast out by doing this if we wanted to get the Caracals. But I'm not even sure that we want the Caracals since just exiling the opponent's creatures forever is also going to work. At some point we need to find a win condition, but we do have a couple of those in the deck still. The best one, I suppose, is our 7 mana enchantment. Alright, let's untap. Dusk Legion Zealots can also start attacking. Finds another one. And there it is. So let's enchant our opponents. And I suppose we just start getting rid of their creatures so they have to actually pay life. And they should sack it to prevent us gaining life here, but probably doesn't matter. So our opponent was happy with the card they scry to the top, which could be another cast out here. But they are losing 5 life. And now that we have the Dusk Legion Zealots, we can start attacking. Opponent uses Field of Ruin on the Spires. Have a few basics left. Opponent gets 2 tokens from Hidden Stockpile and their Procession. But we're just gonna exile them. Opponent scries. And lets it happen, so they were happy with the card I left on top. So let's get in for two. I guess they could also have a Settle the Wreckage here. Yep. Alright, let's, let's get those last two planes out of the deck. Play a Sanctuary, say go. So, Cruel Reality. Has a few turns to get there, but it's likely that the opponent found another cast out to deal with it. Instead, another anointed procession, that doesn't actually do much. Suppose they can use the Shafat Junes as a revolt trigger, but we can just use the procession. So I guess what this does is it lets the opponent scry a bunch with the stockpile, which I guess is worth it. Alright, let's draw. Champion of Dusk, not a bad one. Can help us close out the game should our opponent deal with the procession or the reality. Opponent scries one last time, which is a good sign, so that means that the top card was not that good. And we'll use it again. Play the Sanctuary, say go. Opponent drops to 9. Attack for 4 and then another Cruel Reality trigger will do it. Let's see if they find an answer. Scavenger Grounds, I guess, is another Revolt trigger. But we have enough mana where we can just use the Profane Procession a bunch. And their opponent should be dead. And then we can use the Moment of Craving just to be mana efficient since we know the game is over anyways. 
So the most interesting play, I guess, in this game was whether or not we wanted to get those two Regal Caracals exiled to transform the procession, or whether we wanted to keep it as a permanent way to exile tokens from the opponent. And I'm still not sure what the right answer is. Could be that we should have gotten those Caracals to close out the game faster, but just having a way to keep exiling the opponent's stuff is also pretty good. Not sure why I'm doing all this in upkeep, but uh, an attack for four and then five life lost is nine. So can't think of anything that can go wrong here. Don't even need to show the blood fast. Let's get in four four and say go. Could have also used profane procession on our own creatures at some point to try and transform it. But again, I don't think we needed to. So Angel of Sanctions is great here. Uh, the rest is okay. And another Ixalan's Binding is good. Golden Mice could be serviceable. And Approach, I think, is also going to be good here, just to close out the game quickly. So those are the cards we're looking at. Don't think we want Baffling Ends. Don't think we want Fatal Push. Don't think we want a Moment of Craving. And then I think we shave at least one Settle the Wreckage. Maybe even two, since we have additional answers to the Scarab God. And then just get rid of a random Ritual of Rejuvenation. Could see Lost Legacy doing something, but I'm not sure what. So I think we'll just submit this and uh, see how it goes. Opponent is pretty low on time, so we do need to keep the clock in mind here. Since we don't want to end up timing out and losing that way. And this hand is perfectly fine. Opponent with Courtyard Go will play Sanctuary Go. Got a turn 2 Zealot, turn 3 Treasure Map plus Activate, turn 4 Binding, turn 5 Champion. Mm, Renegade Map from the opponent, which they must have drawn for the turn. Display the Zealots. I think we still go for the Treasure Map over anything else. Or I guess we can also play second Zealot. But treasure map's more mana efficient, and getting that going early is pretty valuable. Opponent with start. That's fine. They can trade a warrior for a zealot if they want to. And then we'll play the treasure map. Say go. And forsake the worldly. Alright, that's pretty good. Let's cry response. And another Zealot, sure, let's keep that. That way we have two Zealots into the champion to draw a bunch of cards. Warrior gets in and finishes a sorcery, so they can't use that at instant speed, that's good to know about. Evolving Wilds gets an island, so they might have a Scarab God in hand, but we have plenty of answers for that in hand already. Let's play the Zealots. Draw a card, another treasure map. I think we still play the others out since I actually want to draw a land to play the champion next turn. There we go, perfect. So we're curving out nicely. Five mana, is this a Scarab God? Nope, a Regal Caracal. I think we're still fine just playing the Champion of Dusk, which can draw us into a Fumigate if our opponent gets rid of our champion. So I'm definitely not blocking since we want the extra card. Tap. Play the champion. We also have to discard to hand size here, which is a little awkward since all our cards are actually pretty powerful. I think I'll go with a land here. Could be a mistake, but uh, don't want to take too much time thinking about that. There's a field of ruin. So our opponent needs to get rid of the champion of dusk. They can use the finish to do that, and then attack with a whole bunch of tokens. Instead, Ixalan's Binding, that's fine. We only have one champion left in the deck, and uh, I would rather have the opponent use Ixalan's Binding on the champion than just use finish, since finish has fewer actual targets than Ixalan's Binding. So we will take a few hits here, so we want to manage our life total, hopefully find a Fumigate sooner or later, but then uh, we can just Ixalan's Binding the opponent's Ixalan's Binding, and be in a pretty good position. Hidden Stockpile, I guess, is also a decent target for our Excellence Binding. Opponent gets in with everyone. 
I guess we double block a cat token or we can just block the warrior and chump and then get rid of the caracal but this seems fine I guess the reason not to trade is a stockpile arch over us got a draw all right so we might be in a spot where we can't afford to excellence binding the opponent's enchantments and just need to get rid of the caracal instead I guess we play excellence binding targeting the caracal and then play treasure map to scry and upkeep So we take three down to three. Put on sacrifices. Servo to scry. Gets another servo. So upkeep scry. Another zealots is awkward since we don't really want to lose life at this point. So let's bottom and draw. We could just be dead if our opponent uses field of ruin on the compass. Let's the rest the opponent first, see what they're working with. Another Caracal, all right, they can't actually play that one. So let's play out the Arch, which might entice the opponent into using Field of Rune on that one instead. Play the Compass, and say Go represents that we have additional removal spells to keep us in it. Compass transforms, since if we tap out for Procession, then they can just Field of Rune the Spires and we're dead. While this still represents having something. But their opponent sees the line, they're gonna get rid of the Spires, so now we're pretty dead. But our opponent still needs to win a third game in 2 minutes and 17 seconds. Which I don't think is gonna happen. So perhaps got a little too greedy with all the card draw this game. And lost ourselves a bit too much life without having a sweeper in hand. So let's try to remedy that in the third game. Given that we're probably winning on time... We should probably take out all our win conditions and just bring in all of the removal we have. Just so that we don't die to a quick start from the opponent. But it looks like our opponent sees that they can't win in time, so they scoop things up. So a pretty lengthy game against Esper Tokens. Opponent did manage to steal that second game, but I think overall we're still probably favored since we have just more card advantage engines and then enough answers to the opponent's enchantments where uh, they can't actually beat us that way and then eventually we can win the game just with attacks or with uh, one of our seven mana win conditions all right so on to the next one all right we're on the draw and this looks like a keepable hand i've got some early card draw engines and then a seven drop not ideal we would like some early interaction but don't think we can mulligan play the sanctuary say go and then I'm not sure if we want to play the treasure map or bloodfast on two. I guess we can play the treasure map and then upkeep scry and then play bloodfast on three. That seems reasonable. Opponent cycles a desert. And cycles another desert. So opponent not doing much, which is good for us. Although a duress can take our bloodfast or cruel reality. And they do go for the Bloodfast. So upkeep, I think we still scry. And Moment of Craving, not sure if we want that. Uh, opponent hasn't presented any early creatures. The rest indicates a more controlling deck. So I think we can bottom that. And Settle, I think is better in general. Can deal with larger creatures as well, so happy with our scry. And an Ifner Deadlands is not going to find a ton of targets in our deck. And Mastermind's Acquisition, that's scary since they can get anything and they have almost perfect information about our hand. And we're certainly not a deck that can punish the opponent for dirtling around. Another Bloodfast is perfect though, so we'll draw that. Say go. And if the opponent has an answer to Treasure Map now, they will also need to answer the Bloodfast. I guess your opponent could have gotten something like a Vraska Planeswalker, which can... Maybe blow up some of our enchantments and also win the game by itself. Although it wasn't going to be able to get the treasure map. And it looks like they got a naturalize and uh, now blow up the bloodfast. That's fair. So still only a one for one trade there. And our opponent spent a total of six mana 
to uh, deal with it and we still get to transform treasure map so still a fine exchange swamp can go to the bottom and we drew a ritual so let's see four five six seven eight so we're one short of arch drawing us a card so i don't think we want to expose it to a potential field of ruin yet so we'll just play the planes and say go and there's scavenger grounds instead is this a Vraska? No, Hour of Promise are opponents ramping. And uh, they do get the two zombies, which we eventually have to deal with. So this is going to be interesting. I wonder what their curve topper is like. If it's just a creature, we're probably fine. If it's something else, then we could be in trouble. So our opponent knows about the arch, and they did indeed get a Field of Ruin because of that. They have two zombies. And there's Profane Procession, excellent, so... That's a great answer to the zombies and to our opponent's potential curve topper. So I only want to play the arch if we can actually uh, draw a card with it right away, which is not the case here. So I think we just play the procession and then end of turn draw a card with the treasure cove. Guess we need to keep enough permanence in play where the arch can have the city's blessing right away. So if we sacrifice the treasure end of turn. We'll still have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so we are free to draw a card with the Treasure Cove here. So we'll take 4, don't really want to use Saddle on the two zombies when we have Profane Procession. And Doomfall making us discard a non-land card, yep. That's why we didn't want to use the Treasure Cove right away. It's usually better to wait until the last moment to draw cards if you don't need to play anything in your turn. So end of turn we'll draw. Opponent could have also decided to use Field of Ruin on the Treasure Cove. Maybe they do now. That's probably what they're considering. Yep. Alright. That's fine. Means we can either keep the treasures for future copies of Treasure Map or we can use the treasures as uh, mana sources which is also fine. Found a Fatal Push which I don't think it's going to have a lot of targets, so we might as well use it now. Untap. Moment of Craving is also a nice answer to the zombie. And now we can start drawing additional cards with the Arch. So we're in a very good spot here, I would say, but that can easily change if the opponent has something like a Vraska or another problematic permanent that we cannot answer. Zombie gets in, I think we just take it. Could use the Moment of Craving, but who knows. The opponent could have a creature we want to kill with it instead. And Profane Procession is a pretty free way of getting rid of tokens. Another Hour of Promise. Let's let that resolve and then we will draw a card and then Moment of Craving one of the zombies. And our opponent also with an Arch and a Field of Ruin number 2. So they can get rid of our Arch. So that was definitely a good draw for the opponent. Let's cast Moment of Craving. And Tatsumok is interesting, since that uh, can pressure the opponent. So I think we just reveal it to the two zombies, but the plan is still to activate the arch. So let's say go. Opponent cycles a desert, and I'm fine taking the hit here. And end of turn we'll use the arch. Opponent should let us draw before they activate Field of Ruin because now we get to thin out our deck of a land. Minor details. And Dusk Legion Zealot's not a bad one. Alright, another treasure map. So I think we start by playing the Zealot here. Alright, I think I'm okay with playing our Dragon here. And we could play the treasure map, but we're not going to scry with it right away since we don't want to get rid of both treasures, so I think we'll just keep it for a turn. And they're going to draw with their arch. And fatal push on the zealot. Hopefully the opponent's win condition is not something like a torment of hailfire that we can't interact with. Although Azor's gateway kind of points that direction, since that's a way for them to make a lot of mana and subsequently kill us with a torment. They might also start using the deserts to shrink down Tatsumok. Looks like they have other plans. Battle at the bridge for seven. Yeah, that'll work. So now it's all about the Arch of Araska essentially. So let's untap. Play the map. 
and say go. Opponent's drawing three cards a turn essentially, thanks to the gateway and the arch. We are still a bit behind. But we have a profane procession in play, which might answer all the opponent's win conditions, but I doubt it, given that they're likely to have a Torment of Hailfire in their deck. And Mastermind's Acquisition might just be acquiring a Torment of Hailfire, which I guess if they have just one in the sideboard and they don't have to dedicate a main deck card to it is pretty smart. So Zealots I guess is better than a random draw. And I think we want to keep lands in hand to discard to the Torment of Hailfire. Opponent still has a Fatal Push, I guess we exile with the Profane Procession here. Opponent draws a card with the Arch. Could have also responded to the Zealot's uh, draw trigger by scrying again with Treasure Map. I guess if we drew something like a Field of Ruin we could have answered the Arch immediately. That's the third converted mana cost exiled. Still don't know what the opponent searched with their acquisition, but I imagine it's coming soon. Doomfall. Yep, only have Saddle left. Don't think that's the card our opponent searched for, so they might still have it in hand. And Arch will definitely keep. So let's draw, play the Arch, and I think think we activate treasure map right now. Field of Ruin, all right. Let's keep that on top. Draw with our arch. And we don't get to play the Field of Ruin right away. But next turn we can blow up the opponent's arch. And I guess we do have a few treasures to sacrifice to potential Torment of Hailfire. But I think it's still gonna end up being lethal here. Azor's Gateway. Opponent still hasn't exiled a land, so that's a pretty easy one. Could also keep the Field of Ruin to destroy Sanctum of the Sun. And another Hour of Promise. That's a pretty good one. And looks like our opponent's out of Field of Ruins. So end of turn we can exile one of the zombies. Alright, so given that we're dead to a Torment of Hailfire anyways, I think we end up using the Field of Ruin on the Arch. Opponent draws a card in response. Get a Plains. And I guess we might as well draw now. Does Legion Zealots. Alright, let's play that. And another treasure map, why not? And I guess we say go. Azor's Gateway gets activated, so now they have Sanctum of the Sun, and let's see what the opponent does with all their mana. And Wildest Dreams, X equals 7. Alright then, so opponent gets back Acquisition, Field of Ruin, Field of Ruin, Bunch of Hour of Promises, yeah, I think uh, we're pretty dead here, but I guess we'll play it out. Naturalize on the procession, guess we'll use it. Another Hour of Promise, that's number four I think. Doomfall, yep. So I guess our opponent doesn't have a Torment of Hailfire, otherwise they could have just used the Acquisition to get it and then cast it right away. Or they're doing it now. So they're searching their library for this one. So they might have a Torment main deck after all. No, just a Vraska. All right. Vraska makes a pirate. Not even interested in killing the treasure map. That's how you know you're in trouble. Field of Ruin blows up our arch. Another acquisition. Searching the sideboard now. And of turn use treasure map. Bottom of the swamp. All right, Champion of Dusk. Draw some cards. Vraska's Contempt in response, so we only draw one. Cast out. Well, that's actually decent here. Um, well, let's draw a card with Treasure Map first. Field of Ruin. Alright. So we know our opponent still has an Arch of Vraska in their hand. So I don't think we want to play the field yet. 
since I don't really want to blow up the Sanctum of the Sun. So let's just use Cast Out, get rid of Raska. And given that they didn't have Torment of Hailfire, I'll play out my land. Say go. And I will chump here. And there's the arch. Sandworm Convergence. So that's their win condition, I guess. Can respect that. End of turn, they get a worm. We'll scry. Settle a wreckage. Seems good. Buys us some time. So let's immediately use the Field of Ruin on the arch. Pawn on draws. Let's get a planes. And then draw with the Treasure Cove. Dusk Legion Zealots. I guess we should have scryed first before drawing, since we would really like to find an answer to the Convergence. Bottom that. Play the Zealots. Alright, no answer. So we'll have to say go. And then we have Saddle for a turn, before our opponent starts making more Worm Tokens. But I mean, the opponent is almost out of cards, so... Moment of Craving, yep. So it's definitely possible that the opponent ends up decking, since they've already cast all the acquisitions in the world, so they might just be out of win conditions at this point. Field of Ruin, Sandworm Convergence. All right, let's draw. Cast out, perfect. Uh, so we don't want to deck ourselves, but we're fine to draw a card here. Let's draw another card. And Compass is pretty good. Say go. Flip that thing to Fog a Worm. And then before the opponent gets a second Worm, we want to make sure to use Cast Out on the Convergence. Although I guess they can just use Field of Ruin. Alright, that's fine. Let's get a Planes. Pretty sure we can find an answer to the Worm, given three draw steps. So I think we're better off using Cast Out on the Convergence here. So we fall to two, and then we have three draw steps to find an answer to the worm token. Don't think we've drawn any copies of Baffling End yet, so that would be a nice one. All our Fumigate, Saddle Wreckage, additional Profane Procession. A second Vraska, wow. Alright, so we should have waited a little longer, I guess, with the cast out. But our opponent's just making a pirate. Uh, they could just destroy one of the enchantments, but I guess that's fine. And there we go, Fumigate. Let's uh, draw another card first. Say go. And unfortunately Vraska's probably gonna kill us. But our opponent somehow keeps making pirate tokens rather than destroying the cast out. Another out of promise. A moment of craving buys us another turn. Let's draw one last card. Treasure map. Alright. Let's play a tapped courtyard. Say go. So opponent cannot use the dead lands at instant speed, so they can't deny the life gain, otherwise we would be dead. But if they have a removal spell, I guess they could deny the two life. So we get another draw step here. Alright, so our opponent finally realizes how Vraska works, so they destroy the cast out. Yep. Upkeep will scry. Sell the wreckage, I guess we'll keep on top. Buys us another turn. Opponent attacks with everyone, no fear. So we might be getting to the point where if we draw Profane Procession, opponent has to use Vraska to blow it up. That might buy us enough time where we can win the game. So upkeep will scry. Yep, there it is. So let's play it. I guess we should probably consider 
drawing with our coves in case we find a, an answer to Vraska. So, sure, let's draw first, I guess. A ritual. Um, yeah, let's cast that. And there it is. Excellence binding. That answers Vraska nicely. And then the Profane Procession should be able to handle the Sandworm Convergence. So let's exile the Worm. And the Pirates. And the Writer opponent realizes what's going on and they scoop it up. So managed to beat the Black Green Ramp deck after they cast all the acquisitions in the world to search through their entire 75 and we still somehow managed to win and their opponent probably wasn't gonna win two games in eight minutes so they scoop it up all right i want to thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.